Hello, and thank you for joining me today. In this video, I am going to walk through a couple ways that you can complete your registration in the ZFAIRS system for a Connecticut History Day regional contest as part of the group, but where you are the second, third, fourth, or fifth group member who is going to be completing your registration. So you'll see I am in my inbox right now. I have received an email from the first person in my group to complete registration, and they have provided me with some information that I'll need in order to complete these two different ways I can get my own account finalized in ZFairs. So I'm going to open up this email, and this link right here is going to walk me through the steps necessary to complete my registration for the Fairfield Regional Contest this year. So what I'm going to be doing at this point is entering in a username, my first and last name I'll be using for this video, as well as the email address I am going to be using. Once I've entered this information, I will press the gray Save and Continue button, and this page opens up, telling me that they will be verifying my email address. I have received an email from Seafares, uh, which was sent in order for them to ensure that the email address I provided can receive communications from the system. At this point, I would like to highlight that Connecticut History Day strongly encourages all students to use a non-school associated email address to create their accounts. In prior years, we have had experiences where students try to create their account using a school email address, but the security measures in place on that school email address prevent any and all emails from ZFairs from getting to that student. Then the student is unable to complete their registration and they do not receive communication from the Connecticut History Day State Office before their regional contest. So please be sure to use a non-school associated email address for this process. I am going to head on back to my email, see if I've received that email from ZFairs yet, and I have. Mine was in my inbox. If you don't see yours after a few minutes, go ahead and check your spam folder, but mine was in my inbox, so I've just opened it up, and I will be clicking the link in here. Now, I am not done with registration. The system will tell me when I've completed my registration, so I'm going to be going through these steps and filling in this information until I reach what is marked as the end of the registration process. So here's that information I entered before. It's requiring I enter in a phone number, which I will put in right now. There's questions on demographic information, any accessibility requirements I have for my participation in the contest. There's my username. I will be creating a password. Be sure that you include both upper and lower case letters in your password. It is a requirement from ZFairs, so keep that in mind when you're creating it and do write down your username and password. You will need to log into the system again, and it's much easier to, and faster to do so when you have that information on hand. The next portion that's required is a parent or guardian email address. Connecticut History Day does send information to your parent or guardian before the contest, so please be sure you have their correct email address listed here so that they can receive that communication from us. And the final step on this page is to enter in your address. Here you are going to be putting in your address, not your school address. Mm -hmm. 
Now, once I've entered that, I will press the gray save and continue button. These additional questions come up. I will fill these in. And once I've completed these required questions, I will press the gray save and continue button again. Now, this screen is automatically filled in with information from my first group members registration. So I am going to make sure all of this information is correct. Press save and continue. Make sure this information is correct. The title of your project can be changed once you're done with your registration. This does not have to be your final title. You can just put in a placeholder there for the time being. So all of this looks correct. I'm going to press save and continue again. Now we've reached some waivers and permissions I need to read and complete in order to get through the rest of my registration. So I am putting in my answers right now and pressing the save and continue button. Now you'll see it opens up a shopping cart that has your registration fee in it. Your registration fee must be paid before the contest. And in order to complete your registration, you will press the pay and continue button. Even though I'm not going to be paying this registration fee right now, I'm going to show you a way that you can complete your registration, even if you're not ready to pay at this moment. So we'll press this button, and you'll see here that if you are able to do this right now, uh, you can enter in the information for that registration fee payment. If your teacher has told you that your school is going to pay for your registration fee, you can click the school button and follow the prompts on the screen there in order to complete your registration. But at this point, I will plan on paying for it myself, but I'm not going to do so today. I'll have to do it later before the contest, so I'm going to press the gray Generate Invoice and Register button. And now my registration is complete. You can see here information about my account, that registration fee invoice that I generated, which I'll go back and pay before the contest, information about my team, and information about the contest that I'm registered for. So that's one way that I can create my account with information from my first group member who finished their account uh, in the ZFair system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log out right now and show you the second way that you could create an account. We're going back into this email from our first group member that has this information here and we are going to pull just the first portion of this link. We're going to go to ct-frc.nhd.org in order to access the Fairfield Regional Contest. So I'm going to just copy this, open up a new tab, paste it in there, and so this has opened up that general page for the contest. I am going to go to the square down here that says sign up now and enter in some information to get this next account started. Now I'm going to press the gray Create Account button, and it brings me back here. This should look familiar at this point. I will be selecting to register as a student, pressing Save and Continue, and we're back to this Verify Email Address point. So at this point, many of the steps look the same as the first time we went and made an account in this video, so I am going to speed through that, and I will be back with um, the next steps once the system starts to look a little bit different. I've now reached a point that should look familiar in the registration process. 
Well, once I press the gray save and continue button, things are going to look a little different from the first time we made an account in this video. You'll see two options on the screen. One that says start a new entry. We are not going to be doing that today. We are instead going to link to an existing entry because that first group member who completed their registration created our project in the system. So that's going to make things go a bit quicker for us right now. But in order to complete this link, I need the project key. So I'm going to go back to that email from my first group member that completed registration. And I'm going to find this portion that says project key. I'm going to copy this long string of letters, numbers, and dashes, head back to ZFairs, and paste this into the project key field. I'm then going to press link, and I've linked my project. Now, these steps are also going to be the same as what we had done previously in this video. So I'm just moving through pretty quickly because I've already completed these steps. But now we have created a second account. So you're going to go through most of the same steps to create an account, either by following the link directly from your first group member or by using the project key with just a little difference right in the middle. I hope that this video has been helpful. Thank you for joining me today and happy history day.